One of my favorite things about playing a small environment is, is you know, when you think about how many stories there are about Bruce Springsteen. Everybody has a Bruce Springsteen story, it seems, you know, for every Springsteen fan does. And there's so many thousands of people who can say, oh, you know, one time I saw Springsteen, he's playing at this little club, and it was in New Jersey on a, it was a Thursday, you know, 6 p.m. He just felt like getting up on stage. And so I like that element of, of his career. And, and the, more, the more experiences you create like that in places all over the world, the, the more people will be out there hopefully hanging out, you know, sitting at the bar or at a restaurant somewhere or at a party somewhere just talking about it. I remember this time I saw this guy playing in this very intimate setting. It's a, and it's a great story. All right, we're going to go over the, the songs we haven't talked about. Okay. Because we did talk about I Don't Want to Be in Love with a Girl. Okay. Uh, any kind of story you have or, you know, anything that we can use as an intro. As an intro. So let's start cheating on me. <coughs> cheating on me. Uh, well, cheating on me, let's see. Well, cheating on me is, uh, you know, focuses on the idea of, of, uh, of being... Uh, well, having a having a jealous moment, uh, I think I think pretty much everybody has had a jealous moment, uh, who's ever been in any kind of relationship, and and in that particular song, I I focus on on exposing that moment, and not just exposing it and exposing the suspicion, but also um, placing the blame on myself, uh, and and saying that uh, basically. I'd been jealous before, and it ruined that relationship. And you're saying, yeah, maybe you didn't do anything, but here, here I am with these thoughts, and uh, I hope I don't ruin this too. Yeah. Yeah. How about I have you to thank? I have you to thank. Well, when I was writing, I have you to thank. I had this. I, I was having the music. I was sort of putting together these different elements of uh, influences. I was feeling uh, a Stevie Wonder type verse and then I was feeling in the chorus that whole I have you to thank for making me so right? That part. I was feeling very Sly and the Family Stone and then the so hard to please because you treated me so that was very Temptations you know and like, like sugar pie, honey bunch. You know what I mean? Like that kind of style. And uh, in that Motown groove. Um, and, or like maybe the OJs, you know? And so I was combining these different styles and, and the music really was making me feel a, like a celebration. So the tune itself was helping manipulate the lyric. And I was thinking, wow, what is this? music make me feel and it was I have you to thank for making me feel so good and you were you were you were thanking someone for spoiling you uh, because they were treating you better than than you thought possible my bus I, I think it's great you know it's interesting uh, with these tour buses they uh, different buses you can have them customized pretty much however you like um, some of the buses that we have slide outs so that once the bus is stopped uh, and you're, you know, you're not traveling any longer, uh, it has this hydraulic system that will open, the, the walls of the bus will actually open a couple of feet to give you a lot more uh, living space. Um, this one has a slide out. Some buses have two, and I was just doing this uh, event with, um, uh, with NASCAR the other day, and they had, some of the, uh, some of the buses had, uh, these, these were amazing. Some of them had four slide outs, so both sides, front in the front and the back of the bus, opened up. They were gigantic. And I heard Will Smith has one that opens side to side and even goes up so it's a second story. I don't know. He's never invited me, so as far as I'm concerned, it could all be a lie. It's not. I was on it. Really? Yeah, it's amazing. That's what I heard. It's, just, it's, it's two stories high, right? Yes, it is. That's There's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it goes up real high. It goes up it's just mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. See that? 
what your next That's nice, it has huh? Huge rims on it too. It has big rims on it? Yeah. You mentioned sports and you said your brother was into boxing. Did you ever consider mm. anything else for a career? Like was music ever a hobby and you had plan B in there? Uh, plan B. Uh, initially, when I was a kid, I, I mean, my, my dream was to uh, be an ophthalmologist, but uh, I, I had gone to uh, a, a concert once um, when I was about 15, and I saw Billy Joel play. And um, up until that point, I thought music was a, uh, a selfish career. Um, because I was thinking uh, that I enjoyed it so much that it had to be <laughs> completely selfish. Um, but when I when I was at the show and I and I saw people reacting and I saw I saw the pleasure they were getting from it. I saw the joy. Um, that it was at that moment that I felt that music was a form of medicine and um, that it wasn't selfish as a career. And then I decided that at that I decided that night that I would that I would pursue music for a career, um, and uh, and that was that, yeah. Ever have yeah. a chance to tell Billy Joel, though? Um, no. Okay. I've met him, but, uh, didn't but I didn't say that to him. No, uh, I figured that would be overwhelming at the time, because I was, I, was, I was backstage. Uh, um, I'm friendly with a uh, with, uh, sax player of Billy Joel's, a, a guy named Richie Cannata. And uh, when Billy was doing those shows at the Garden, uh, when he did a string of shows over the course of maybe 11 weeks or something, um, I went to, uh, to see one of the shows and, and, uh, and meet Billy Joel backstage. And um, he was very nice, you know. And he said, oh, I've been reading a lot about you, which means I heard a lot about you and uh, I hope you don't suck. <laughs> so uh, I was like, oh, thanks for that and uh but i didn't i didn't have the I, I didn't really have the uh the cool factor to uh to have a regular conversation with him the whole time i was you know i was like a 12 year old girl you know i was like oh my god it's Billy joel you know <laughs> very embarrassing i was like this with my braces <laughs>